Hi, the Smoking Elk here, and this is my Barbecue Better series. Now, over the course of the next 12 weeks, I want to get as many of you into barbecue as possible, whether you're moving from a gas barbecue to charcoal, whether you're just starting out in barbecue, or whether you just want to take your charcoal game to the next level, this is the right place and the right series for you. Over the next 12 weeks, I'm going to talk you through the basics of how to get the best out of your charcoal barbecue. We're going to talk about what essentials I always have to hand in the shack. We're going to look at the different types of fuel. We're going to look at how to regulate your airflow, your temperature, using your vents on your barbecue and then we're going to cook some lovely dishes along the way. Today it's all about what fuel to use for your barbecue. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the charcoal briquette. Now these pillow shaped briquettes are basically formed from sawdust and some binding chemicals um, to form these rock hard little bullet pillow shaped briquettes. Now you'll commonly use these maybe in a weather kettle in a bullet style smoker. Um, they are consistent, they do produce a nice consistent burn. They produce a fairly long burn. Um, they do also produce a lot of ash. One thing to look out for with these as well is there's a lot of bad ones out there. So if you find, pick up a bag from a petrol station, for example, that says instant light, you're gonna find that they've got some accelerants on there. They've got some sort of uh, lighter fluid, some chemicals. That when you burn, yes, it's gonna to help to get these lit because they are difficult to light otherwise, um, which is why we use a chimney starter, but I'll come on to that in a second. But be careful because like I said there's a lot of nasty ones out here that are just going to give you an acrid taste they're going to tank your food um, me personally I don't like using briquettes I know there are a lot of fans of briquettes they do produce a consistent heat they're easy for dialing in your temperature stabilizing your temperature um, so yeah look out for briquettes but if you are going to use them make sure you get good quality briquettes in my experience Weber briquettes and heat beads um, uh, were, were always good for me um, in the early days when I was using these so there's your briquettes. And I just touched on the fact that you shouldn't buy any that have got accelerants on there, any lighter fluid, any chemicals. So if you're gonna use these, then you're gonna want one of these. You put the briquettes into here. This is the chimney starter. Briquettes go in here. You pop a couple of fire lighters under here, and that's gonna produce a chimney effect. It's gonna get these coals lit a lot quicker than it would you faffing about in a barbecue. Uh, it's gonna take you ages if you're just trying to stick a couple of fire lighters on these. And please, whatever you do, don't use lighter fluid, do not do it, because it's just gonna smell, it's gonna taint your food. It's not gonna give you a good experience, um, and we want you to have a good experience, so you keep coming back and doing it again and again and again. So if you're gonna use these, good quality, in a chimney starter, with a fire lighter, happy days. Next, we're gonna come on to my fuel of choice, which is lumpwood charcoal. This is essentially wood, uh, branches, etc. that has been cooked, shall we say, at an extremely high heat, um, with no oxygen, um, and what you're left with, basically all the moisture has come out of this, so any chemicals have come out of this, and you're just basically left with carbon. And as a result of that, um, it leaves very little ash, it burns very, very cleanly, and it burns very hot. So this is why I like to use lumpwood. It essentially is fuel for the barbecue in its purest form. This is my fuel of choice, lumpwood charcoal. Next up, obviously, as a fuel, is wood itself. If you're gonna use wood, maybe you've got a fire pit or an offset smoker, um, or you've got a braai. If you're gonna be cooking anything over an open fire, um, then wood is obviously a very good choice. But if you're gonna use wood, make sure it's been seasoned for at least 12 months uh, or kiln dried, um, but you want this stuff as dry as possible. If you use wood that's been freshly cut or only been sat around for a couple of months, um, it's gonna contain a lot of moisture. And that, all that's gonna do, it's gonna take a lot longer to get started, to get lit, to get yourself a nice hot fire because of the moisture coming out of it, but it's also gonna smoke a lot. So get yourself a good quality seasoned hardwood or kiln dried hardwood for your fire pit, your offset smoker, your braai or whatever. If you consider your fuel, your briquettes, your lumpwood as your heat source, we wanna add some flavor. And most of the time we do that with smoking and we do that with different forms of wood, starting from sawdust to chips to wood chunks. Now, like I said, consider your briquettes and your lumpwood as your fuel. These are your flavour, almost like a seasoning on your food. So these are quite an important ingredient in your food if you're going to want to add that flavour of smoke, that taste of smoke, the subtle taste of smoke, I should add, because you don't want to over-smoke your food um, because I've done that many times when I was first starting out and it is not a pleasant taste. It tastes of bonfire. So now we're going to take a look at each of these and what you would use in each scenario. So we're going to start off with sawdust, obviously the smallest um, of the wood should we say? Now this stuff um, you would use for cold smoking. So um, you might have seen, I smoke a lot of bacon in the colder months. Now to cold smoke, you would put some of this stuff into a maize type smoker. So it's kind of like you pack it in, you light it at one end and it slowly 
very slowly burn around the maze producing a smoke but not any heat so you can do this in the colder months so you've got your bacon hanging you've got this packed in you light it with a tea light or, or a fire light or whatever you want to do um, and then you close the cabinet the smoking cabinet that you've got the bacon in and this will just really slowly burn all the way around usually lasts for about 12 hours and what you'll come back to is food that's been smoked but hasn't been cooked um, so it's perfect for things like bacon cheese garlic nuts there's many options you could do with cold smoking so that's sawdust and that's what we would use that for so next we're going to take a look at wood chips now these um for obvious reasons you're not going to want to put in for a big smoke if you're smoking a pork shoulder or brisket or whatever you're not going to use these because these are going to burn up very quickly they're obviously very small and as soon as they catch they're going to produce a short burst of smoke and then it's gone when i was first starting out i thought um wood chips was the only way to go and i'd read lots of things about soak your wood chips first um, and that will make them last longer and you'll get more smoke um but Seriously, don't soak your wood chips um, because it's just going to take longer to ignite and you're going to get the smoke that you don't want off of them. If you're going to be using wood chips, you want to use them for a nice quick smoke. So maybe some fish, maybe a bit of chicken where you don't want to put a lot of smoke on. The cook's going to last, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You want to get a short, sharp burst of smoke, burst of flavour on there and chuck some wood chips on your coals as the fish is cooking away, as the chicken's cooking away or whatever it is. You just want to get that little bit of flavour on there um, and they will do you right. But don't use them for anything where you want to put a strong smoke flavour on over a period of time. So next up, you've got the wood chunks. These are what I use the most of when adding smoke to my food. They're going to work well in a kettle, in a bullet smoker, in a Kamado. And what you do with these essentially is maybe put, depending on the meat, because um, different meats can take smoke a lot better than others. Uh, brisket, um, for example, pork shoulder can take a lot of smoke. So you would maybe put three or four of these into your firebox um, and they will give you four or five hours of smoke and give you that lovely smoky flavour. Lamb, for example, is quite a delicate meat, so you would probably use one of these or even something half the size of this if you wanted to add a bit of smoke onto the lamb and because smoke, in my experience, it can overpower the lamb a little bit. But these um, are what you're going to use mainly. Again, don't soak them. You do not need to soak them because it's going to take them longer to catch um, and you're not, it's going to take you longer to stabilise the temperature in your smoker um, and it's going to take you longer to get the nice clean smoke you want. If you're going to be cooking with wood chunks, then you want to make sure that you stabilise the temperature and you've got nice clear smoke coming out of the top of your smoker or your barbecue. Um, a mistake many people make, and I made um, a few times early on, is I was always looking for lots of smoke to come out of the smoker. When I didn't see any smoke, I thought there's going to be no smoke flavour, but it's quite the opposite. If you've got lots of grey smoke or black smoke or very visible smoke coming out the top of your smoker, then it's not ready to smoke on yet. You want your smoke almost invisible, nice wispy smoke, they call it blue smoke, and um, that's going to be clean smoke, and that's going to be the lovely clean flavours that you're going to get from the wood. I am a big fan of the fruit woods, so cherry, apple. Um, cherry I use on almost everything, it's my wood chunk of choice. Apple is great on pork, and then you've got the stronger smoking woods, such as oak, um, that you might want to use for brisket. Um, so do a little bit of research into what flavour profile you're looking to put on whatever it is you're cooking. But yeah, so there's your wood chunks. Lastly, you've got your planks. Um, this is a cedar plank. And this is probably the only wood that I will soak before cooking. Because what we do with these, these are good for fish, for salmon, for trout, things like that I'd use them for. And you soak it first. And then what we do is I'll put it over the coals just to get a bit of char, just to get a bit, a bit of smoke going first. And then we lay our fish on it and move it over to the indirect side. Cook it indirect. But because this has got a bit of char and it's caught slightly, it's going to release the smoke. It's going to release the flavour of the wood into that fish. It's very subtle, um, but it does make a difference. So that's what you would use your planks for. So that was this week's how-to, a quick overview of the different fuels that you will use in your barbecue, your smoker or your fire pit. I hope you found it useful. <laughs>